Africa, the dark continent. Years ago, the throb of the war drum sounded and called the tribes to gather for battle. Fierce wars were waged and the prisoners that were taken were used as slaves. Throughout West Africa ran a network of slave trails. After the coming of the white men, Slavery was abolished and slave trails were replaced by iron rails. The British and Portuguese between them are building a railway from Lobito Bay via Benguela here, up to Angola here and on to Elizabethville. It is to go on into the British South Africa and link up with the Cape to Cairo Railway in Rhodesia. When completed, it will give Rhodesia a gateway to the Atlantic. The terminus of the Benguela Railway is at Lobito Bay. To make shipping easy, the train runs along the quay's side. Bags of maize are being loaded and there goes a bullock on his way to Europe. New carriages for the railway are unshipped from a steamer which has just arrived. And now that we've seen that one safely ashore, we'll join the inhabitants of Lobito in the great excitement of the day seeing the mail train start for up country. Look at the lines and you'll see that a narrow gauge is used. Beyond Lobito, the train runs through a sugar cane growing district. Factories are being built round here for extracting the sugar. But young Africa knows a simple way of getting sugar from the cane. Upper siding, the natives are loading up sacks of mealies to be marketed in Europe. The mealie train plunges down a cutting. The contraption in front of the engine is a water tank. The great distances between station and station on this line makes such provision necessary. We are going to come out on the plains below this weird looking rock called Kimbembo. The train crawling across the vast African countryside looks like a tiny insect. The earth in these parts bakes into very good bricks. The finished bricks are taken to the new railway by the old transport, ox wagons. Up she climbs on an easy gradient and soon runs into Huamba, the capital of Angola. Huamba will be the headquarters of the Benguela Railway when these enormous railway yards are finished. To 
get hydroelectric power for these works, the Kwando River, 12 miles away, is to be turned to account and a dam is being built across these falls. Wheat grows on the uplands beyond Huamba, and the line passes through orange groves, which produce good crops, if we can judge from this little lot. Still climbing, we come to higher country, and the next stop is at the town of Silva Porto, which has a simple municipal water supply. Silva Porto is famous for its herds of cattle, which, since the building of the railway, helped to supply the home-killed beef of old England. The Kwanzaa River is crossed by a, a four-span bridge. Once over it, we run into country where in well-watered fields your morning coffee is being planted. And further on, the coffee berries are picked from full-grown bushes. These plants that look like cactus are sisal grass. The fiber in the leaves makes a very strong rope. So far, the railway has been useful chiefly for commercial transport. But soon, crowds of tourists will be coming up to see these marvelous falls at Coemba. A rainbow has got caught in the spray. Beyond the falls, the Benguela Railway has been completed to the Angola-Congo border. 840 miles from Lobito. The Belgians are pushing on to complete their section of the line across the Belgian Congo. Every day, the workers' train sets out for railhead, loaded with men and materials. This gang completes about a mile of permanent way a day. When this section of the line is finished, Tourists will be able to go direct from Lobito to any point on the railways of the Congo, Rhodesia, or the Union of South Africa. Note that pressed steel sleepers are used, as wooden ones would soon be destroyed by insects. This is not a variation of the Charleston, but a way of balancing the heavy weight of the rail. Until the line through the Belgian Congo is completed, we have to go on to Elizabethville by car. The motor service is good, but a road of logs makes one remember longingly the smooth running of a railroad. Crossing the river by ferry is a tedious business, but before long the railway engineers would have put a bridge over and the train will run across. We can tell when we are approaching the town of Elizabethville because the factory chimneys stand high against the sky. The town is the center of one of the richest copper belts in the world and the huge mining plants work day and night. The copper ore is dug out and carried to the works where the metal is extracted. The copper comes white hot from the furnaces. The 
The molten metal cools into ingots that are sent to supply the needs of Europe. Somehow, this doesn't look like the heart of darkest Africa, and it isn't, for Africa is getting lighter every minute. Trade, prosperity, and civilization are following the iron rail as it penetrates the forests of what was once the dark continent.